Hey guys, Dave here with Amari Productions. That was a very loud hey. That probably is clipping. Anyways, my name is Dave with Amari Productions and today we are covering family photos. And if that seems like a random topic, it's not. Because a few weeks ago, we did a collaboration with Jamie from JW Coordination. Uh, and in one of those videos, we mentioned in passing family photos and that that really was a topic for an entire video. And then we kind of moved on. We didn't really think anything else of it. But I noticed in the comments, um, at least a few of you asked for that video. So it's been on my mind. And so here we are today giving you our five tips. I'm saying are, it's just me alone in my car. So here we are today giving you, I said we. So here I am today giving you my five tips. Where's my hand? Five. My five tips for your family photos. And per usual, with our educational videos, uh, we're not just gonna be doing this sitting in a studio. We're gonna mix it up. Hybrid educational video, vlog, edu vlog, vlog kit. You know what? We'll work on that part. Okay, so here's the sit rep for today. Got to the office this morning and realized I left my computer charger at home. So I made it until lunchtime before my battery died. So now we are on a covert mission to go home while the nanny is there, grab my charger without alerting the toddler that I am home, because if she sees me come home and then immediately turn around and leave with the nanny still there, she is gonna lose her beeping mind. Okay, the first point, and I'm going to have to do these by memory for now, uh, because the camera, I wish I could show you this, but I have nothing else to document this with. The camera is kind of like perched on my dash with my phone wedged beneath the lens to hold it up right now. Uh, because I don't have a windshield mount that can hold the weight of this camera. So we're gonna try to drive and film but I have a very good feeling the next thing you're gonna see in this vlog is this camera crashing down to the floor of my car. Maybe I'll hold, I'll brace it. It's not like I've got a stick shift or anything and that I need both hands to drive it. Oh, there it goes. Yep, there it goes. We're just gonna drive through downtown in first gear only. Maybe when I get off this hill it'll, yeah, that's better. Okay, the first point is minimize and optimize. Family photos is not the time to put together a hundred pairings of every relative and family and, and everything that you have. You really want to get it down to the essentials. Uh, and the main reason why is obvious. It's time. This, in a shocking twist of fate, is not working. Whoa! Okay, that is very loud music. <laughs> All right, what are we filming right now? Oh, that's actually kind of a cool shot. We're about to get on the freeway. Let me see if I can wedge it back up and if it will stay while we're on the freeway. Okay, I think I got it to actually stay. I flipped my phone over. It's a little bit, yeah, you don't care. Okay, where were we? Minimize and optimize. I mean, this point really is pretty simple. Just don't, don't overthink the amount of pairings you need for family photos. Uh, really try to trim the fat on that and keep it to as few as possible. I'm not gonna give you a number because that really is unique uh, to you and how many cousins and uncles and, and whatnot, if you have step parents, you know, step family. So that, that, that's gonna be up to you. Uh, but just think that through and, and when you first finish your family photo list, consider that more of a first draft than your final list. My second tip, schedule your family photos before your ceremony. If you are doing a first look, please, please consider doing this. Even if you're not doing a first look, you can still knock out a number of pairings of you with your family and your partner with their family. 
But if you're doing a first look, consider this for a couple of reasons. One being the obvious, the more you can get done before the ceremony, the more you are like playing with house money. Uh, that's the first and most obvious reason of why you'd want to knock out family photos before the ceremony. The second and less obvious reason is that it forces a good chunk of your guests to be there early. Now you're less likely to have to push your ceremony start time back while you wait for aunt so-and-so or your siblings or your kid. Whoa! Oh, I caught it! Yo, I caught that. While making a left-hand turn with a stick shift, caught that, crashed zero cars, and now I'm in a drive through line, so this should be a lot more peaceful. And if you know anything about me, you know exactly what drive through line I am in. Where were we? This is quite a violent vlog. <laughs> yeah, so you're less likely to have to push your ceremony start time back because a good chunk of your guests, all of your most important guests, are going to be there well before the ceremony starts. And again, we've already touched on this in multiple videos, but the most common place to lose some time is the start of your ceremony. So anything you can do to help prevent that is good. It's about to be my turn to order, so let's pause here and I will show you for those of you that don't know where I am. Duh! Go for it, please. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Can I do a cheeseburger plain with light toast? Uh, fries and a Coke, please? Thank you. Thank you. This line's gonna take forever, so we should be able to get through at least points three and four. I might have been able to knock out this. Whoa, stop it! <laughs> Might have been able to knock out the rest of this vlog. Tip number, what are numbers? Three, budget more time than you think you need. Uh, I almost always see family photos budgeted for about 15 minutes. Sometimes even as few as five or 10 minutes. Unless you are following some of the other tips in this video to the stop moving. <laughs> I guess that framing's fine. We'll make it work. Uh, in, unless you're following some of the other tips in this video to the T, uh, there's a good chance your family photos will take closer to 20 to 25 minutes. This is very bright, and then there's nothing up here. Uh, does this does this help even that? No, that is that is worse. I'm sitting in a drive-thru. I can just hold the camera. Not like I've never held a camera before. So even if you have it scheduled for 15 minutes, and you're like, ah, five minutes is close enough, but that five minutes is coming out from somewhere else. And generally, where that ends up being is your couple's portraits. Okay, tip number four. This one is going to save you a lot of time. So remember we said family photos end up taking usually around 20 minutes. Here's one of the reasons why that happens. The ceremony ends, you guys walk back up the aisle and kind of disappear to the back. Your bridal party walks up back up the aisle, disappears to the back, and your parents as well. Uh, and then the ceremony ends, all the guests get up, and they start to make their way where? To the bar. Except that about a third of the guests, or, or some percentage of the guests, you need to stay up at the altar or meet you at the hedges or wherever you're doing your family photos. You will be surprised at how long it takes to corral, or maybe you won't be surprised, how long it takes to corral all of your uncles and aunts and cousins and grandparents. And come on, Uncle Mike, for the last time, no, you cannot go get a drink right now. We need you in this photo. So here's the tip, have your officiant make an announcement at the end of the ceremony for all of the family to stay put for family photos. That right there will save you five to 10 minutes. Like seriously, sometimes it takes 10 full minutes to go run down every person that you need back up at the altar. It is a pain and it takes forever. Okay, I need to pay real quick. I'll be right back. Nope. 690, please. Thank there you. you. Go. Let me give you your lamb matchy for Tio Park. Thank you. Come on, get the exposure right. There we go. Okay, and the fifth and final tip, which relates directly to the fourth tip. Assign a family member from each side of the family that will know 
who everyone is on the shot list. Because otherwise, it's going to be your photographer standing with a sheet of paper with a bunch of names, just yelling out, Uncle Dan! Aunt Sherry! Where's Aunt Sherry? Does anyone know who Aunt Sherry is? Nobody wants that. So assign a family member that knows who these people are. Uh, one, they can have a copy of the shot list and be uh, prepping groupings, having them on deck, just off frame, uh, ready to run in next for their photo. But two, even before that, they will be the ones that will run over to cocktail hour, run over to the bar, and hunt down all of your family members who are terrible at listening at directions. Okay, the timing of that could not be better. I'm about to get my food, and then I need to go home and see if I can sneak my laptop charger out of the house without pissing off a toddler. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Okay, I have arrived at the house. Step one, reconnaissance. Hey, is Mercy down for a nap? Not yet, but we're in our room right now. Okay. I don't know if you can be like extra, extra quiet. <laughs> I will sneak in Mission Impossible style. I would totally overlay the Mission Impossible theme song, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. So, I will provide it myself. Ba -da -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. It's Christmas time right now. I think there's sleigh bells on the door, so. All the times for there to be freaking sleigh bells on the door. Also, to all of you haters, yes, I get my cheeseburgers at In N Out plain because I am a five year old and I know what I like and I'm just gonna get it. I don't need to prove myself to anybody, especially my own body that desperately wants fruits and vegetables. I don't need to prove myself to my body. My body can learn to get what it needs out of the meat, cheese, and bread that I provide it.